what I think we should do is introduce much, much, much stricter laws when it comes to gun ownership in the states. And then just see what happens. Oh no, it's harder for you to purchase a gun for the next 10 years? Boy, howdy, I just don't care. That seems like a non-problem. This year, we've had 210 mass shootings. 210. There have been more shootings this year than there have been days this year. What is it, 43 of them took place in Texas? Let's go and take a, a look at the, uh, the mass shootings that have happened so far in the United States. Because we recently had another one in Texas. We had one in Texas, and you have to ask yourself, how often is this going to happen? Is this already happening in some school? Uh, I feel like we're making up for the past year or so under the pandemic. Well, shootings definitely went down under the pandemic because people physically weren't in schools. 21 killed in Texas elementary school shooting. Just two days before students were able to begin their summer break, uh, a lone gunman entered a Texas elementary school and opened fire, killing 19 young children and two teachers in the deadliest school shooting of almost a decade. All the victims have been identified, removed from the school, and families notified, according to uh, Lieutenant Chris Olivares, spokesman for the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, all fatalities and injuries took place inside one classroom at Robb Elementary. Eva Morales, a fourth grade teacher, is among those killed. Her aunt, uh, Lydia Martinez Delgado, told CNN... Uh, she had been an educator for 17 years and enjoyed running, hiking, and biking and spending time with her family, according to her profile on the school district's website. Uh, Xavier Lopez, a 10-year-old, had been identified as one of the victims. His mother, Felicia Martinez, confirmed to the Washington Post that he was funny, never serious with a smile. Uh, Amira Joe Garza, another 10-year-old, has been identified by her father as one of the children killed. Uh, Angela Garza posted to Facebook early Wednesday. Thank you, everyone, for the prayers, uh, helping to try to find my baby. She's been found. Uh, she's now flying high with angels above. Uzia Garcia, 10, was identified as one of the victims uh, his family confirmed to CNN. Garcia was in fourth grade, his aunt Nikki Cross told them. Uh, his uncle, Mitch Renfro, described Garcia as a great kid full of life. Let's look over the details real quick. The gunman, identified by officials as Salvador Ramos, is dead and believed to have acted alone. Ramos is believed to have shot his grandmother before heading to the elementary school. She was hospitalized in critical condition late Tuesday. The suspect crashed his vehicle in a ditch near the school before attempting to enter the premises. A motive for the shooting is unclear at this time. Law enforcement engaged the suspect but was unable to get inside the school and barricade himself inside a classroom where he started shooting. As the shooting was taking place, officers uh, were going around the school, breaking windows and trying to evacuate children and staff. They were then able to force entry into the classroom where the shooter was. Uvalde police and state troopers were first to arrive on the scene following a 911 call and were met with gunfire. Two police officers received a non-life-threatening uh, non injuries and are out of the hospital. More than 20 U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents responded to the scene and provided aid. At least one Border Patrol agent was wounded by gunfire. The gunman has been identified as 18-year-old Salvador Ramos. He attended that high school, uh, according to Texas Governor Greg Abbott. A photo of two AR-15 style rifles was posted on Instagram account linked to the gunman three days before the shooting. Uh, the photo was posted as a story under the username Salvador or Salvador. Multiple classmates confirmed the account belonged to him. The two guns that were used in the deadly school shooting were purchased by him for his 18th birthday, according to the state senator who represents uh, Uvalde. Unfortunately, on his 18th birthday, he bought those two assault rifles. It's the first thing he did when he turned 18. State Senator uh, Ronald Gutierrez, uh, Gutierrez told CNN's Aaron Burnett, citing a briefing he received from Texas Rangers, Gutierrez said the guns were bought legally from a federally authorized dealer in the Uvalde area. Ramos had stopped attending school regularly. One of his former classmates told CNN he barely came to school. Ramos had recently sent him a picture of an AR-15, a backpack with rounds of ammunition, and several gun magazines. The former classmate said Ramos would get severely bullied and made fun of a lot and was taunted by others uh, for the clothes he wore and for his family's financial situation. Ramos worked at a local Wendy's, a manager, Uvalde is about 90 miles from San Antonio. Okay, so we're getting into here. As of Tuesday, the Gun Violence Archive reports at least 213.
13. I was three off. 213 mass shootings in 2022. CNN and the archive define a mass shooting as one in which four or more people are injured or killed, not including the shooter. This is the 30th shooting at a K-12 school in 2022, according to CNN Tally. So far, there have been more mass shootings than... Yeah, I, I already said that. I didn't have to read that part. Uh, including the racist attack at a Buffalo, New York grocery store, which we already covered in another video. Tuesday's massacre is the deadliest school shooting since 2012, when 26 uh, children and adults were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. So, what do we do about this? Because, because, because seriously, I, I just have to ask, how often does this have to happen in the U.S. before we go, hey, let's fucking do something about it? Biden has been saying, hey, let's do something about it, but he doesn't say what or how or give any indication that he's going to actually do shit. Ragwin says a shooting almost happened at a high school in Richardson, uh, Texas, near Dallas, and another one uh, in New York. Everyone's on the lookout for copycats. Sky Comic Goddess says we can't do anything. It's hopeless. How? How is it hopeless? We are human beings. We managed to land on the fucking moon. We managed to eradicate smallpox. How in the ball sacks? is the species that are able to solve those kinds of problems unable to stop mass shootings. How? That makes no fucking sense to me. Zero sense that we as a species can solve such complex issues, and yet the idea of stopping people with fucking sticks with gunpowder in them that shoot out bits of lead is too complicated of a problem that we as a species cannot figure that out. That doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. Not in the fucking slightest. Because here's the problem. I don't know what you are supposed to do about this. You're sure the number one pony uh, says, like Aaron Ross said in a speech, as long as they have their Second Amendment, they won't even noticing that they won't even notice that they're losing all their other rights. Yeah, the Second Amendment, that amendment that's supposed to be there so that we can protect the rights of United States citizens. We defend the First Amendment with the second one. That tired fucking line that never actually, nothing ever actually happens with it. Nobody uses their Second Amendment rights in the United States to protect the rights of themselves and others. They don't. They use it as a dick measuring. That's literally all it is half the time. I'm not saying that responsible gun ownership isn't possible. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the ability to bear arms. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is as of right now, we as a nation are at a point. But that, that statement means nothing. I'm going to say a statement, and you have you have heard this statement before, and it's utterly meaningless, but it's also true. We as a nation are at a tipping point when it comes to the idea of what we allow, how often we allow this shit to go on. But guess what? We were at a tipping point when the Buffalo shooting happened. We were at a tipping point when several shootings happened. We've always been at a tipping point. Every single time something like this happens, the thoughts and prayers argument happens. Nobody wants to do anything about it. And conversations about how to even solve this problem aren't even there either. But let's take a look here. A study in the medical journal, uh, BMJ, found a strong association between the st uh, strength of a state's gun laws and its rate of mass shootings. Paul Keeping is an epidemiologist with Columbia University and first author of the paper. He says researchers had already looked at the relationship between gun laws and outcomes like suicide and homicide. But to this point, there haven't been any analysis done on whether or not uh, there's an association between permissive gun laws and mass shootings. The study looked at data from 1998 to 2014, pull, uh, pulling mass shooting data from the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Uniform Crime Reporting System in order to quantify how permissive or restrictive each state's gun laws are. They added a scoring system and a traveler's guide for gun owners. So it's actually written by a guns dealer and a lawyer and someone who associates himself with the NRA. It's also made for gun travelers. The point being that we didn't have any inkling of any type of bias. They plotted those scores against the rate of mass shootings in each state. After controlling for a bunch of factors, including poverty, education, and unemployment, they found that the rates of mass shooting tend to be higher in places with, drum roll please, less restrictive gun laws. Places like Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and of course, well, I don't even have to say Texas. They also found a strong association between mass shooting, mass shootings and a state's 
rate of suicide by firearm, which is often used as a proxy for gun ownership. We have the visual summary here. More permissive gun laws. Jesus, most of the places in the United States are quite permissive, actually. Jesus Christ. The model was adjusted for household income, unemployment, uh, female-headed households, poverty, incarceration rate, uh, percentage of white people in the area, and high school graduation rates as well. In fully adjusted models, a 10-unit increase in states uh, in state permissiveness was associated with an 11.5% higher chance of mass shootings. My understanding of this article is that it demonstrates that three phenomena are strongly associated with each other across states. One, the number of state firearms restrictions. Two, the proportion of suicides committed with a gun. And three, the number of mass shootings. A senior behavioral scientist with a nonprofit research organization, the Rand Corporation, said who was not involved in the BMJ study. Shell, who co-authored a 2018 publication called The Science of Gun Policy, says the use of the Traveler's Guide for Scoring States is different. That it's nice to show the association persists even when if you use ratings designed by gun owners. But he says it's still a chicken and egg scenario. Do stricter gun laws cause a reduction in gun ownerships and mass shootings, or could it be the opposite? Well, here's the thing. If the data fucking says one thing, and other countries with more strict gun laws do not have mass shooting epidemics like we have in the United States, then I would go to to just have a I would say that maybe, perchance, there is field evidence available of what it is. GG, come on, not in front of my camera, you dork. Yeah, we could at least try it and see. And yeah, we're gonna have lobbying from people like the NRA, but guess what? You're not removing every gun from American soil, that's not gonna happen. We have too much of a gun culture here. People literally use them as penis measuring devices. What you can do instead is you can limit these things. Because what tends to happen is people think of these things in binaries. People have this idea that, oh, well, if you can't 100% fix the problem, uh, then what's, the, what's even the point? And I wish I had such a childlike view on things. I wish things either were or were not. I wish there was no room in between for nuance. That would make my life a lot easier. But unfortunately, we live in reality. And the reality of situations like this is, that if you can institute policies that lower the amount of guns that get in the hands of potential criminals like this, then you are lowering the lethality rate of those criminals. You are lowering their ability to attack people. Let's get a couple counter arguments out of the way real quick. Uh, counter argument one, won't they just use other weapons like knives? Okay, here's my answer to that. If somebody has a knife, they're lethal to one person, maybe two. Maybe even three. If somebody's got a gun with a drum magazine, they're lethal to wherever they want to spray and pray. A person with a knife is lethal to somebody within five feet of them. 20 feet if they're throwing it. A person with a gun is lethal to... Well, it depends on the caliber of the round and the length of the barrel, I guess. It's a good idea in my head, and this is somebody who believes in gun ownership, to have much more restricted access to guns and ammunition. I understand for some people, guns are a hobby. Can I give my counterpoint? My counterpoint to that is, I don't care. If your ability to engage in a hobby supersedes a 10-year-old child's ability to live, then your priorities are fucked and your brain is stupid. Just throwing that out there. I don't care about the hobbyist counterargument. And again, nobody's taking all of your guns away. That's not what I'm advocating for. I'm, ag I'm advocating for guns and ammunition being a lot harder to access because from what we're seeing in the data, it looks like that will actually have a positive effect on the amount of, or a, a, a negative effect on the amount of mass shootings we have, but a positive effect on the country as a whole. So they probably think their guns are their kids. Well, I mean, if their kids are meant to kill people. Reaping says it's a good question for future research. It's always future research. It will always be future research. I have a question. At what point are we actually going to fucking do something instead of just having future research? We have hundreds of years of research on this. It's called the gun laws and mass shooting rates of every other first world country. It says for most years, the average rate of mass shooting in permissive states was higher than those in restrictive rates. But in 2010, those lines started to diverge even more. We can see that in 2010, there's kind of a very interesting separation. The restrictive states are having a decreasing rate over time of mass shootings, while the permissive states are having it. It appears to be at an increasing rate. 
In other words, the gap in the rate of mass shootings seems to have widened, at least from 2010 to 2014, the most recent year for which data was available at the time of the analysis. If that trend were to continue beyond 2014 into the future, states like those in the Mountain West might expect higher rates of mass shooting over time. Reaming says it's unclear what might have started the divide. That's another question for future research. It could also be that previous research was not introducing as many control variables. That's a thing that you are that, that isn't being considered here. If current research is more fine-tuned because it is introducing more controls that need to be there so that you can have accurate data, and older research that suggested different outcomes did not use the same control variables, then of course the end result of all of that is going to end up being different. You're surely the number one pony. Thank you for the 10 bits. Said, uh, my dad owns guns mostly for hunting, but he feels that one day uh, the white man will come after us again to take away our indigenous traditions again. Well, again, I am not advocating for not having guns. I'm not advocating for taking every gun away from an American citizen. I don't think that's even a possible thing to do. What I think we should do is introduce much, much, much stricter laws when it comes to gun ownership in the States. And then just see what happens. Oh no, it's harder for you to purchase a gun for the next 10 years? Boy, howdy, I just don't care. That seems like a non-problem. That seems like something that I don't have to give a shit about. I don't need to. It's outside of my Overton window of things to fucking care about. Let's just do it and then take a look and see what happens with the data. See if the amount of mass shootings goes up or goes down. We'll see. So we need more research as a proven strategy to avoid action, see cigarettes, opioid crisis, and climate change. Yep. Said if someone has to wait a month to get a gun, it might discourage. Sometimes it can, sometimes it won't. But again, these things are not about binaries. These things are about sliding scales. We see what we can affect, what we can change over time. It's, there will be no perfect solution. We already live in a world where people have access to firearms. There is no perfect solution here. But constantly asking for more research, more research, more research seems like a way to avoid finding a solution. Because with the more research, you're going to find people who are looking for that perfect solution, that silver bullet, if you will. And you won't find it because it doesn't exist. But what you can do is engage in triage. You can make things better for people right now, even if you can't make things perfect for everybody immediately. But with that said, let me know what you think in the comments section below. I hate everything to, to quite a high degree right now. As always, everybody, hence it end the video tagline here.